All right. Let's get this show on the road. Hi. Hi there. Uh, my name is Rendon, and this is Accidental Origin, the weekly writing web show. Uh, how's it going? How's it going, chat? How are people doing? Doing good? Just jumped in the shower real quick right before I started the show. <laughs> my hair's still a little, a little wet. Um, but yeah. Um, Cool. I have zero drop frames so far, and it astounds me. <laughs> That's even possible. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's how the count laughs. So yeah. Uh, this is the second of two episodes that I really have done no planning for uh, in an effort to try and expand my show horizons a little bit. Um, we are continuing this week with uh, the uh, game design for Game Chef. Uh, today is the last day. Well, tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. is the la is like the submission deadline. Um, so I'm going to submit today, uh, tonight in fact, because, yeah, <laughs> um, not waking up at 5 a.m. to submit, that's not happening. Uh, so anyway, um, so we're going to continue with that. I've done a little bit of work in the week, including a midweek stream where I covered a bunch of stuff. Well, not covered, but like I continued working on it. Um, and as much as this is going to be a work stream, I am going to kind of talk a little bit about game design concepts in general, uh, mostly because I do want to keep the show uh, fairly educational, uh, as it were. Um, but yeah, this will be the last week we're doing game design, at least for a little while. Uh, we're going to go back to the short story next week. Um, other than that, life has been good. Been doing a lot of things. Uh, got some exciting writing stuff coming up that I'm not really going to talk about right now until it's more concrete, but I do have some stuff lined up, so that should be good. Um, after I submit this design, I am probably going to continue working on it uh, to develop into a fully fledged idea. Uh, that's my plan anyway. So, uh, expect to see some, some tweets about that uh, in the upcoming month or two. Uh, because, yeah, I think, it, I think it's good, and, and everyone I've shown it to seems to, seems to like it. So, <laughs> I think that's a good sign for what we're doing. Um, other than that, I don't think I have any real new news. Uh, finishing up Sid Field on the book club today. I do know what I'm doing for the next book, uh, but we'll talk about it at that end. Um, yeah. Any points of order from the chat for me? Yes, no, maybe so. Um, no, nothing. Delay. All that delay. It's been super cold here today. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I fixed my mic settings. So then now there's gonna not gonna be a ton of white noise and other random junk. Which should improve the overall experience. Cause last time, oh my god, that fan. That fan was so ridiculous. Regret everything about that fan. I apologize. It sucked. It sucked. Alright, let's get to work. Do this. Let's do it. Right. 
So, uh, quick, uh, quick summary for those who weren't here last week. Um, basically, um, Game Chef is a nine day uh, game design competition uh, to create a playable uh, first draft of a analog game. Um, so think, you know, role-playing games, board games, uh, that kind of thing. They don't explicitly state that you can't do a video game, though it has to in some way relate to analog components or push the boundaries of what an analog game can be. Um, so not just general video games, but, but video games that play on that sort of theme. Um, and speaking of themes, uh, uh, the idea of how the competition goes is they give you a theme and some ingredients. Uh, so this year the theme is technology, and the ingredients are alarm, dance, sketch, and sunlight. Um, and I'll talk about those a little bit more in depth as we go through. Um, so yeah, here's my design, uh, the design I've been working on. Um, this folder down because it's final there. So uh, I am creating a do-it-yourself board game. Basically, um, a board game style game that uses maps that you draw on the fly uh, as part of the game mechanics. Um, so. It plays like a board game, but it doesn't really require the uh, setup or product or any of that other stuff uh, involved. You can kind of just pick it up and play it with your friends sort of thing. Um, so yeah, uh, just a little preface here. I have my uh, intro to the game. Uh, 400 years after the old gods decimated the world, society has started to rebuild itself. You've arrived in the small coastal town of Pitfield, a somewhat boring place except for the recently discovered entrance to the ruins of a pre-cataclysm city buried deep underground. While many of the locals wonder if the gods will bring their wrath down on any who venture inside, the neighborhood king has offered a substantial reward for the first person to bring him a map of what's down there. You are a cartographer, a newly rediscovered art. It's your job to go down the ruins and be the first to bring back a map of any old technology left deep in the old ruins. And I realize that that's a little repetitive, so we're actually going to tweak a couple things here. Hang on. Uh, so... Head underground. All right. Yes. The Old Ruins is a do-it-yourself board game done in the style of text-based adventure games, Final Fantasy, fighting fantasy, and old-school dungeon crawlers. Remember trying to map all the rooms in Zork? Well, it's a little like that, only harder. Got it. Okay. Cool. So, um, I have my little booklet printout of the game. Uh, for reference, um, so the first part, the introduction, I just flipped through the three things there. Those are all good. Um, the main parts of the game that I still need to work on, I need to expand on uh, the character roles and their rules. I need to expand on the search rules. I need to expand and re... Well, not necessarily expand, but I need to rewrite um, some of the map-making rules. Uh, so that's a major gameplay element. And then I need to finish some tables to give the like any potential players uh, something to actually play with. Uh, so we're going to do some, some basic tables and stuff like that. Um, if we have time in the show, like depending on how long this takes, uh, I will do some InDesign formatting and, and fun stuff. Uh, I was trying it out earlier uh, with uh, my friend Drani, uh, and uh, I was really bad at it. <laughs> um, it's been a while. Been a while. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 
But I, but I will do some uh, to maybe make a little bit more polished of a polished finished product. Uh, but that's a last step sort of thing. message here about a thing that I'm going to put into the doc. Cool. Excellent. All right. So. Timing, all the timing. Um, okay. Um, okay. so characters have Please. Oh no, they're going to be expanded on after. Three steps, that's three steps. I'm gonna export this real quick. And um going to upload this. Game shift. Zoom entry. Okay. 
Okay. So for any of you who aren't on my Discord, you can add it here. Uh, and in the file share uh, channel, I have posted the PDF if you want to take a look and follow along. Um, what I've done so far. Uh, and please don't hesitate to ask questions about uh, more about the game, how it's played, uh, what specific terms are, anything like that. Um, I'm kind of kind of been thinking about this all day, so I'm I'm really on a on a roll of this needs to happen, this needs to happen, this needs to happen. Uh, and if I'm not enumerating that well enough, just let me know, and uh, I'll break it down a little bit slower. Um, I mean, we're all, we're all here to learn, right? So, um, yeah. I'm going to change this. Um, each character. Uh, each player character. Gets one special ability. <laughs> to help them navigate the dangers of the roads. Oh, I know how to do this. I'm going to do that. Do some, uh, so the, one of the cool things about using Scrivener is that every time, um, it's hard to see because I can't make the actual, uh, can't really make the, uh, the software itself be bigger, unfortunately. I did look at some stuff. No real easy way to make it blow up, unfortunately. Too bad. Uh, which was easier to see. But, uh, oh well. Um, so, each of these groupings, when I compile them uh, at the end, or when I, when I compile and export it, it'll actually make like subheadings. So I can keep all my content in like sort of separate sections to make it easier to A, read, uh, and B, uh, for automatic organization, which is super nice. Um, ew. Copy this. Messing up things. That's better. That's better. And I need three more hours in order to make an actual game. Yeah. Okay. Quick. Uh. So. Yeah, see? 
special abilities, and then it, it has each ability and details out the stuff that I've written in. Exactly what I wanted to do. So, that organizes the system we go. With these guys. Fuel packages. Or. Um, fuel packages determine the general play style of your character. Um, package contains one, uh, your hit points, one weapon skill, and one exploration skill. This Just gotta get this done real quick. Fun, the fun joys of being organized. Copying and pasting all the things. <laughs> Attack and negate a single point. Cool. That's the night done. Here in.
full set. Right, where a full set of armor. And excuse my spelling of armor. I spell it the Canadian slash British way, <laughs> not the American way. Because uh, I am Canadian. I'm using the Canadian spelling. Um, I have to experiment on it, I think. Um, but the general idea would be that uh, the weapon skills are actually relevant to, uh, which is why they get separate names. I haven't really figured out um, what I want to do with that yet. Well, this is the perfect time to figure out skill checks, isn't it? Um, what's a what's a good thing? What's a good way to do this? Probably uh, one or two d six. Um, minimum threshold. I mean, I could do it the same as I did the armor. Or that, uh, where we can state something along the lines of um, Oh, no problem, Johnny. Uh, I'm super excited to see uh, the final product of the cover design. Um, which I'll say. Uh, I challenged Johnny uh, earlier on in the week when she was reading my one of my early drafts to uh, to to see what she could do with with her imagination and illustration. Um, I think she's learned a lot over this week uh, doing it. Just lots of different types of brushes and stuff. And uh, I'm really, I'm really glad for that. I mean, and I'm challenging myself with doing this design competition at all, um, and and I hope that that the viewers are also challenging themselves in certain ways based on the stuff that that I talk about. Um, so there's certainly that. Uh, but I'm glad that that there are people who are who are challenging themselves because of the things I'm doing. Um, makes me feel like I've I've kind of accomplished a little bit of what I'm trying to do with the stream, right? So yeah, thanks Johnny. Uh, trying to add a little bit of flavor text to get sort of a feel for, for what I'm doing with the game. I mean, ideally, uh, seeing as this is the first draft, I'm not going too hardcore with it, but ideally this would have like kind of a section of be like barbarian, have like a picture of a barbarian and uh, Kind of like a little bit of flavor text of what barbarians look like in the set and some of those things um let's give it a few of those steps mostly because they are they're nice they're nice they look very aesthetically pleasing they're cool and all that but at the end of the day they're they're just it's not necessary for gameplay and, and right now i'm just trying to hit as much gameplay as i can Checking enemies and food to survive. For their movement is okay. 
So this is kind of a language issue uh, where I talk about phases. Um, I'm having trouble coming up with different words to um, different words to distinguish between turns, phases, and uh, different like steps of gameplay. Because uh, in the way that it kind of occurs to me is that um, every player gets a turn in each of the two general phases, but then each turn is broken down into phases because in general in gaming uh, turns are broken down into phases um, or steps. Um, I could do steps, I guess. Maybe I'm just thinking about it a little weird. Hmm. Let's pull up our... I find this helps a lot. Uh, sometimes, like, this isn't going to give me a word that's useful, but it can help jog your memory uh, or jog your thought process as to how you're interacting with the thing. Um, so I'm going to put a turn. Here we go. These are interesting. Scene shift though. Turn. Game. Period of time. Round. Round. Ooh, round. Round is perfect. Round is perfect. So every round, there is a mapping turn and a character turn, which is broken up into phases. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, I think. Each round. Or would it be better as each turn, there's a mapping round and a character round. Hmm. Okay, so it has to be phases inside a turn. Yeah, I'll say map. Cool. Let's clear it up a little bit. For their movement phase, the barbarian may roll a die. Five or six. Player to your left has to reveal enemy within reveal the nearest unknown enemy. Cool. Yeah. We'll go with that. That's good for now. Um, the one thing I am thinking is these special powers are kind of useless. Or not useless, but like... I'm thinking that maybe it'd be better just to have classes or roles and just have the players pick one. Um, 
I don't know. What do you think, chat? Does that make more sense? I mean, I already cut one of the sections that I had before. Uh, because I had a gear one as well, but the gear one made even less sense because it was just kind of like very incidental stuff. And in an effort to make the game more simple, or and it, it made more sense because it was like I had this sort of like fighter paladin style character, uh, but he had nothing to do with sort of his special stuff, and like the armor was a separate thing, and I don't know, I don't know. Because, I mean, I could easily just just cut the, the special abilities and just turn super speed into a, a skill for one of the characters, uh, for a different type of character, and then detect traps as a different type of character again. Um, like, sort of maybe an adventure character who can detect traps, or... Um, Or maybe detect traps isn't a thing at all. Maybe that's not a thing. I don't know. Oh. Thinking. Thinking. So, um, just a quick related to re repeat the question. Uh, is it worth it to keep special abilities, or would I be better off taking the two special abilities that I had come up with and, and changing those into uh, two more character roles? So instead of character correction, character creation being select one of these and select one of these, it'll be select this, this is who you are. Um, so kind of like pre-made characters, but not exactly. No, I mean, they basically are pre-made characters at that point. Um, which I think might just be better uh, for the moment, at least in terms of playability. Uh, I can come back to um, take a quick note down here. Uh, like, uh, I'm planning on having a section at the end. If I have extra words, I'm planning on having a section at the end. That'll basically just be uh, future plan sort of thing. So I think for the moment I'm going to cut that because I think uh, I think it's better just to go with kind of the basic and and see how it plays first before I make any decisions. And that's another one of the problems that I'm kind of having with this game design in general is that I don't get uh, to play tests because I don't have time, uh, which sucks. Because <laughs> it'd be it'd be way better to make some more informed decisions based on play testing. Uh, so there is that. But what I'll add to my future plans thing is um, revamp character creation to have more options. So maybe there'll be like an advanced version of this game, which would have a full set of character creation rules. But for the moment, I think we're going to go with uh, just the basic. Basic of basic. So I need... Yeah, that makes sense. I'm going to change this from skill packages to character roles. Character roles determine the general playstyle of your character. Contain hit points, one weapon skill, and one exploration. Cool. See, and then this just becomes. Two steps. Make a character roll. Make a character roll. Name your character.
I have this thing. I mean, it comes from my journalistic background a bit. Um, I'm gonna remove that because I'm making that. Blank sheets of. Uh, it comes from my journalistic background where. Uh, I really prefer it when any sort of reference to a uh, game or something else is uh, done in italics. So I'm going to include that for now. I'm going to check the readability of that before I make any decisions. Uh, but for the moment, it's because it'll bug me. We're going to toss this down here. Delete this entirely. Shift delete. Cool. Oops. And oh, yeah, I wanted to change. This is going to be a purple. Quick reorganizing to be in alphabetical order. Oh. Now we have the barbarian, who has an axe. Herbalist's turn. Point not in combat. He, they, they may consume a potion to regain two hit points. They may not gain more than their starting hit points. Starts with three. There. Not in combat. Mm, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Purple is done. An interesting idea for the soldier. Oh, yeah, I forgot to write.
Well, it's mostly formatting stuff. Working through it. Or disarm trap. And um, disarm. Five six thing. Oh, actually, let's. Say detect. Call this detect trap. Actually, going to use some of this. Yeah, because, okay, yeah. Okay. Before searching the room, the rogue can roll a die to detect any traps. Or searching. Roll can roll that taking traps in the room. A five or six. Player. Uh other players must reveal a single trap in the room. This trap does not affect the rogue and is considered disarmed. Boom. Take the trap and disarm. Eat, eat, cool, scrounge. Okay. All right, so my, my interesting idea for the soldier's scrounge is that um, uh, the soldier may make a free, uh, may make an extra search action. Once per turn, soldier may make an extra search action. This extra, this extra search 
may not be used to find technology. May not be used to find technology. Uh, but any other results. Uh, An extra search action not be used. And uh, the technology I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Uh, I'll just leave it as that for now. I think that's fine. I want to explain it in more detail, but I'm having trouble wording it in a short, short form. The other reason why I'm not fleshing out too much of the flavor text and stuff, because I do have a hard, a fairly hard word limit. So that can be problematic towards uh, towards that. So I'm not really anywhere close to it at the moment. I use Detect Trap. Uh, I'm going to make a Ranger character. Uh, Archer? Archer or Ranger? I'll say Ranger. Here between. Soldier. Speed, string, rangers, movement phase, and then move two rooms instead of the regular one. They can bypass room. They're fast. Do things like that. Oh. Uh, weapon skill. Cool. The other thing I'm going to add to my future plans list is I'm also going to add um, uh, make uh, expand. The weapon skills and how they differ. Because um, right now, all basic sort of one damage point sort of style thing. Uh, but eventually, it would be cool to have, like, you know, if he has a longbow, maybe he can shoot into a, uh, another room if he knows an enemy's there. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, so the one thing I'm missing is I'm missing sort of the hit points and all that. So uh, I'll write that down real quick here. Oh, actually, I'm going to do it like this because it's the best way to do it. So we're going to put uh, HP colon that, and I'm going to duplicate this. Times okay. and 
So I'm gonna put this here. So yeah. All of the categories here. E. 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 Oh no, I didn't need the examples because I have set roles. So yeah, um, are the H is the HP going to be? A certain number of hit dice or is it going to be a set stat I prefer the hit dice to be honest uh, it's a little it's a little more random it gives you a little bit better uh, idea of it makes it a little bit more random it makes each character feel a little bit more unique it's not that hard to keep track of um, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to write here, HP Barbarian, uh, 3d6. Oh yeah, uh, introduction, materials. I'm going to put a little terms category here. And we're going to, in the terms categories, we're just going to have dice notation. Right, because I'm only using six sided dice, so it doesn't matter. So we're gonna go three dice. Herbalist. Ooh. And the knight is gonna be two dice. Uh, um No, that might be I want it to be a little bit more different. So let me do Four dice. Every player has four dice. Total three dice. Two dice. Holder have two dice. Rogue will have one die. And Herbalist will have one die. Okay, it's got one, four, one, three. Two twos, two ones. I think that makes sense. Well, actually, in that case, I'm better off just making the barbarian a three. So then you have two threes, two twos, and two ones. See. Let me just go back to our character creation. Ends. Try to avoid the use of the word your. The rules are speaking directly to you. It's not something that's really a big deal and probably is correct in most cases, but I don't know, it's just bugging me in this document right now, so I'm gonna try to not do that too much. Dice. Weapon skill on it. Uh, so in the overview, made it in three steps. Character roll. Roll your. Characters hit point dice 
name the character. Lowercase, lowercase. Uh, future plans, character sheets. So yeah. I have some ideas for how those would look. Uh, character sheets are important to role-playing games uh, in that they are a easy way of organizing the information you'll need to play that character. We don't have a ton of information, so it's not a huge deal to have pre-made ones. Though it would be kind of cool to have ones that would be made with um, the special abilities written on. So you would have uh, like, oh, the barbarian character sheet just has the barbarian's abilities written written directly on it. Uh, so it'd be easy to reference that without having to go back to the rule book. Um, with that being said, with only one ability at the moment, it's not a huge So it's just after eight o'clock. Uh, so I'm gonna compile this real quick. One. Um, I'm gonna upload it to the Discord. Let me post here. Okay. So that's uploaded there if people want to check it out. But I'm going to take a five minute break and I'll be back at 10 after 8 uh, Eastern Standard Time, of course. So in about five, six minutes. All right. So, uh, yeah, and what are we doing after the break? Oh, after the break, we'll be working specifically on the how to play rules and combat and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah break i am astounded by the amount of frames i've dropped it's so amazing uh 126 0.1 percent oh so good but yeah take a break i'll see y'all bye in about five minutes cool